Welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. I'm Eva Tucker from iSelect Fund, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is cattle technology. On today's call, we are joined by Tamara Lee, co-founder and CEO of EIO Diagnostics. EIO Diagnostics Utter Health Mastis, Mastitis System combines advanced sensor and machine learning to detect infection signs, infection signs days before there are physical indications in the udder or milk. Results are provided in less than a second without the need for samples from the cow, from the milk or the cow, and a signal is provided instantly that integrates with the workflow of the farm. Earlier detection means earlier treatment and less impact on the herd. Companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. And we've invited you all to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in EIO Diagnostics market. You are potential customers for EIO Diagnostics products and services. You have built a company similar to EIO, EIO Diagnostics. You have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities they may face. So before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea who, of who we have on the call today. And please take a few seconds to answer. A few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help EIO Diagnostics find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. You can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Tamara Lee, co-founder and CEO of EIO Diagnostics. I'm off to a dubious start. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me today. My name is Tamara Lee and I am the CEO of EIO Diagnostics. Our core business is infrared image analysis to improve animal health and productivity. And our first product to market is a tool for the early detection of mastitis in dairy cows. And many of you on the line will be very familiar with the dairy industry and the problems in dairy health. Mastitis is the number one animal health issue in the industry. It affects one in three dairy cows during a lactation cycle and is estimated to cost $2 billion a year to the US dairy industry. If you take that globally, that estimate goes 20 to $38 billion a year. And if you bring it down to the farm level and take a farm, a sample farm of 5,000 cows operating in the United States right now, that can be a million dollar a year issue. And right now, this is still very much a cow by cow battle. Standard practice on these large scale rotary dairies often looks like this. So it's a person manually stripping each quarter, spraying the milk on the floor and looking for signs of clumping or flaking in the milk or obvious signs of inflammation in the udder. That cow would then be flagged and go through a confirmation process, diverted off to the hospital barn. What we're looking to do is automate this function. So provide real time utter analysis with a relatively small footprint in the barn. So this is an installation or a photo from an installation that we had in Minnesota. You see, if you follow the red arrow at the center of your screen, the little green dot, that's one of our, our cameras and it looks up at the udder from below. It's installed right after the entrance of the rotary before the milking equipment goes on. The image to the right is a sample of what that camera is seeing. So we get actually fairly good coverage, both of the, well, full coverage of the rear quarters and uh, fairly good coverage of the four quarters from that position below and looking up. And what we're doing here, a quick notice on it, on economics, we can take one of these cameras and serve each rotary. So that's servicing up to about 10,000 cows a day. But if we take a look under the hood, what we're doing is integrating the RFID signal with the image, that thermal image captured by our utter camera. 
it all that data gets processed in the barn on an edge server. So we don't need continuous cloud connectivity or high speed internet to do this all the time. We process it on the cloud and we're looking for anomalies in the data. When we see those anomalies, when we see something in an individual cow's utter health record, we mark that cow immediately. So before the milking equipment even goes on, you know you have an animal um, who needs care or at least confirmation. And then we can take that edge data that is saved and, and put it up to the cloud where it's aggregated with all of our users' data so that we're in continuously improving the algorithms that we're using in our mastitis detection. Of course, users can access their own data through a user portal and it's completely anonymous that that that's not you know there's nobody going in from the outside and looking at what's going on in, in your own herd this whole system had our patent issued at the end of march this year and so when we look at the benefits of automated detection the the question of labor replacement is first and foremost we're really looking at reducing the monitoring and treatment labor, not just because it's something that can be automated, though it is, you know, a very specific problem that we can automate on there, but because this is a skilled job, it requires some training. It's a repetitive job and it's a hard job to keep people in. So you find that, you know, you get human fatigue errors with long shifts or you're rotating people through the same position so that they can, they can, you know, share the the load in that place or you know some producers are, are choosing to uh, do sort of episodic checks so not checking at every milking but instead putting putting a stripper on every couple of days and we're providing consistency of seeing every cow at every milking being able to put together a total health record for each of those animals so that we're getting more and more refined to that specific animal's needs instead of going with general trends or 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 health data that you can sometimes see in things like electroconductivity testing where where the the sensitivity isn't specific to that cow's needs we're looking at clinical and preclinical mastitis detection and so starting primary right now where we're at with clinical early stage clinical detection and then of course working with that aggregated data to get more and more precise and sensitive over time um, being able to automate this and use a visual sensor technology means that there is no touch and no transmission from one cow to another. So it's a very hygienic and efficient way of doing this. And then from the dairy health perspective and the milk production side, over time, reducing the incidence of mastitis improves the overall milk production. A clinical case of mastitis can, can uh, result in up to a 20% lifetime loss of productivity in that cow. And we're also looking to maximize milk quality premiums, or at least just milk quality where premiums aren't necessarily paid. I know this is a very shifting and dynamic industry right now. Overall, looking to just identify infections early and reliably, reduce the treatment times and antibiotic use, resulting in healthier cows, reduced labor and higher profits for farmers. And the farmers that we're working with are choosing to work with us because this is a simple, affordable, and immediately actionable solution for a persistent animal health problem. We've really focused in our design on making sure that what we have is easy to install and maintain in the barn, that it integrates seamlessly with the workflow, whether it's a high-tech barn that's running automated sorting gates and, and various integrations into into the dairy or it's a very manual barn that's that's using their maximi maximizing efficiency by the use of of the rotary and then you know having people supplement on tasks along the way the other thing that we are able to do with this technology is really operate at a at a high pace and a and a high scale so you know the base technology can work as well for one cow as it does for ten thousand cows but there aren't a lot of technologies that can say yeah actually you can we can install on this rotary and we can see every cow at every milking and and catch them going by at a speed of you know three and a half or four seconds per cow 
So our implementation process right now is being refined for the rotary milkers. This is a, a rotary that we were working with in Minnesota and they see about 9,700 cows a day. Our installation time, we say two days here, uh, that's, that's you know, we have it done in, in less than a day with the hardware. And then it's just about refi refinements and making sure that we're getting uh, the data transfer the way that we need. There is absolutely no downtime on these rotaries. This rotary here has, I think, 45 minutes of downtime a day. We don't require that downtime to be able to do what we do. So it's a very unobtrusive technology to install and to use. We have a calibration and a training period, particularly right now with our early installations, because we still are early in our process. It's four to six weeks of, of data collection and running in parallel with the current operations so that we're collecting data, our data on the rotary, but we're also verifying that against the farmer's animal health data that's coming in from their records and their screening. And then we're marking cows either using a standard cow marker which we've developed which is a blast of livestock paint to identify the cows in manual situations or working on custom integrations with herd management systems and, and other technologies in the in the rotary oh i skipped something here right now we are i you know i talk about the the u.s focus and the global opportunity for this technology our focus as a company right now is in the U.S. market. We're very focused on working with these large scale rotary dairies because that allows us to gather the kinds of data that we need and to do the validation that we're doing now. So we're really commercializing this year for the rotary dairies and then taking that technology, like I said, that works for 10,000 cows and bringing that to a handheld portable diagnostic system um, that can work for for small herds, either in parallel parlor conf configurations, for veterinary health technicians, for use in the hospital barn, or even for smallholder farmers in international use cases. And then really, I think the key for us in, in the future in terms of opening up particularly the broad, broader North American market is going to be uh, cracking the nut on parallel barn configurations. So being able to, to look at those parallel parlors and, and get effective imaging because it is a different logistical challenge and the integration with robotic milkers as well. So that's where we're going with our product. We're really excited. It's a, uh, it's a huge time for us at EIO Diagnostics, just with our, our first installations coming this year and, uh, and then moving out into market early in 2022. So really what you need if you are a farmer is a rotary parlor with internet access. And what we're looking for is those early adopters and introductions to farmers that you know that may be interested in bringing a solution like this into their barns. So if you're interested, we'd love to talk to you. Let's talk. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Tamara. That was very interesting. Can you talk a little bit? Well, we'll be back up a little bit. I want to reiterate to the audience, you can ask a question by using the Q&A box found in the middle of your screen, or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you to ask your question aloud. And so while we're waiting for the audience questions to come in, I have a few of my own. So can you talk to us a little bit more about your background and what led you to found EIO Diagnostics? So I'm actually one of the three original co-founders for EIO Diagnostics. I like to say our technology was literally born in a barn. Uh, a fr friend of mine, Corey Spencer, is a, a farmer and a cheesemaker on Vancouver Island. And he went to goat dairy, actually, in Canada after being a full stack developer and was just puzzling through his own problems and challenges as, as a farmer. And he said, okay, so what do I have from a technology perspective? in terms of those skills that might help me solve this problem that I have from a farming perspective and came up with the original concept and, and prototype for this. So that's actually where this all started. But he, he brought in or was introduced to um, our founding CEO, Demir Walliner, who had a background in uh, product development and startups. And they, between the two of them, had a lot of technical expertise but didn't have a lot of marketing expertise. And so I, I have over 20 years of experience in the agriculture and food sector, working specifically in communications and marketing, a lot in science communications. I've just been captivated by innovation for a long time. So I came to 
EIO as the chief marketing officer, I moved into managing the product development team. And then when my co-founder left last year, stepped into the role as CEO. Awesome. We have a question from Jacob Steiger. It says, it's an interesting idea. Is there published data where this technology has been validated? Do you have sensitivity and specificity data? Yeah. So yes, there is a lot of published data on thermal imaging and mastitis detection. And, you know, Jacob, I'd be happy to follow up with you by email um, specifically on, on any papers that you'd like to see. So we're building off of a really strong academic research base for our own sensitivity and specificity. From the academic literature holds about 70% 70, uh, 70 accuracy rate without image manipulation. And part of what we're doing in our technology with our algorithms is a lot of image isolation around the udder. So all we're looking at is the pixels immediately related to the udder and we mask out everything else. Um, and, uh, and we've been doing a lot of work on refinement. The work that we're doing in the installation this fall is going to give us the specificity and, and sensitivity data that people are looking for. So that's, that's where we're going next. What are some unique challenges to the company and to companies like yours? Livestock are messy and they move. <laughs> That's, you know, that one of, one of the challenges I think in, in just general adoption of technology for the livestock industry, and particularly the, the dairy industry is just, you know, you're working with really slim margins, you know, so you have to be super, super precise on your product market fit and return on investment. And, you know, doing data collection on something that is completely not novel data sets. I mean, we're not, we're not reading license plates. This is an optical character recognition where we're collecting novel data sets and, and looking at them in, in new ways. And so that's another one of the challenges that we have. But, you know, I think from a business perspective, farmers are, a, particularly astute. I mean, there are very, very sharp pencils in this industry and a lot of people who can do the math in their head. So, you know, from a business perspective, people are looking for the answers to their questions, as long as we can take this, take this forward and really address that problem effectively. And so that's just a data collection challenge. Michelle asked, does the imaging look for inflammation how early does the image give you notice before clinical mastitis is seen? Yeah. So yes, that's essentially what we're doing is early indications of inflammation. We're, we're doing a thermal imaging and then we're using machine learning to identify the changes in the pattern. So we have, we have the original image that is compared against all of the previous images that we have um, for that specific cow. So it's not even based on a herd average or a normalization um, across a population of cows. What we're finding is that, that we can see cows uh, two to three days before uh, clinical mastitis um, infection is, is identified. And we're just going through the process of, of validating that. All right. Well, we'll see if, we'll, if anybody else has any other questions, you know, keep them coming. Can you talk to us a little bit more about your team and, and where you're looking to grow in the next year or so? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so if anybody knows a machine learning specialist for looking for a senior developer position, yeah, we're, we're actually developing or growing out our, our team significantly right now. I think we have four open technical job requisitions. So check our LinkedIn page if you know anybody with technical skills who's interested in making a difference in animal health. But but yeah, a lot of our focus right now is on, on that development team, on the implementation, and making sure that we really nail these, these first installations that we have coming up. So, you know, those, those first 10, 10 customers are really, really critical um, and important development partners as much as they are customers. So, Great. I know we had a few people that, that joined late. So I'm going to, I know you mentioned this in the beginning, but can you kind of talk about the market size again, just briefly? Yeah, so what we're targeting is the fastest growing segment of the U.S. dairy market, which is dairies over 2,500 cows and specifically with rotary milkers. Uh, if you're below 2,500 cows and you have a rotary milker, you still qualify. You know, like I said, I'm in that closing slide. What we're looking for is rotaries 
willingness and an internet connection. That's what it takes to make this work. So, but, but, you know, we do see that consolidation in the U.S. dairy industry that has made this kind of technology particularly opportune in addressing the, the issue of mastitis. And, uh, and so they say the last USDA stats that I had was about 20 or about, sorry, 40% of the U.S. dairy herd right now is being milked on rotary milkers that fit this configuration. So that's about 4 million cows. We have another question from the audience. Stan says, nice presentation. Can you advise false positive rates in your test to date? What are the challenges to getting the accuracy rates up? So uh, like I said, um, and thanks Stan for the question, we're working on giving, like coming up with the data analysis. And, and here's, here's what part of the challenge has been for us is that the the version of the tool that we're taking out now the platform that we're taking out now to customers does the full integration of cow identification the challenge that we had with our previous data collection and the reason that i can't just say oh here's our false positive rate because it's the first person first question people ask um, is that our last version didn't integrate the rfid signal and so we had a problem pairing uh, specific cow data to what we were seeing with our thermal imaging. We've solved that problem. And so these next installations that we have coming up this fall are going to be answering the question about specifically what are our false positive rates and, and our sensitivity and specificity. The challenge of getting the accuracy rates up is the algorithms. And so it, going back again to the data collection, we really just need to, to be out there, you know, gathering the data, refining our algorithms and dialing that all in. And that's, that's what we're doing. This really, this next couple of months is, is full of that right now. So. All right. If we have any other questions, you know, we still have some time, but, but we always like to, to end with the question, what can the audience help you with and how can they find you? Right. Okay. So. You know, I talked about those early installations and the importance of those those first customers. And so, you know, we're super excited to be here today. I'm super excited to be here today and to reach out to this group because I know that there is somebody you know who may be interested in bringing this in to their barn to try. And so we are looking for those early adopters. We are also looking for technical expertise. And so, you know, our requisitions are all on LinkedIn right now or on our website, which is eiodiagnostics.com. And uh, so if you have technical expertise or you know people who are in that, not necessarily the ag tech space, but, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who say, you know, I, I, I just don't want to build another app. I'm like, this is not just another app. This is actually a technology that solves a real problem for real people in a fundamental space in our food supply chain. Hey, that's kind of a cool reason to get up in the morning. So if you know somebody who's motivated by that, you know, we want to talk to them. And then, yeah, it's, it's those introductions into the networks. So, you know, we're building out our partnerships and our distribution networks. You know, we're building out our relationships with farmers and, and looking to get into, into barns and have those conversations with farmers one-on-one -on -one. and, uh, and, you know, in, in the future, the not too distant future from a CEO perspective, you know, we're looking, we're going to be looking for investment again, coming up, but not right now if we're not fundraising. We just want cows. All right. Well, thank you tomorrow for joining us today and congratulations on all your progress to date. I'm really excited to see how you grow. I'd also like the audience for their, to thank the audience for their active participation. We host agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. If you want to share this with a friend, you, we welcome you to do so. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. New viewers can register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks again. Thank you. Take care.